Today I'm going to show you how to get RetroArch set up on an Xbox Series X or S. With the upgraded specs that come in the Xbox Series S and X, there is a renewed interest in the developer mode of the consoles to run emulation software like RetroArch. This has definitely become a lot more mainstream thanks to videos from Modern Vintage Gamer, but unfortunately he doesn't really go into too much detail on how to get the whole thing set up and running, and a lot of other channels haven't really touched on it yet, so I figured I would walk you all through this setup process, start to finish, getting it installed, core setup, everything along the lines, in my traditional fashion. So instead of doing this all in one massive video, we're going to actually split it up. So this video covers installation and basic setup of the front end. We're going to start on the Xbox side of things. So load up your Xbox Series S or Series X. And once you're on the dashboard, you can press the Y button on your Xbox uh, controller. And that will bring up a search menu. Go ahead and type in dev mode. and you will get this dev mode activation box here. There's two of them. I just went ahead and chose the one that has the Xbox Series S and X on it. Get it for free. And then let that go ahead and install. The program is only about 100 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long to install, but for some reason, the beginning of the download does take a minute before it really gets going, so... Eh, I'm just leaving it all real time here for you. And now that that's downloaded, go ahead and open it. So you're going to get these welcome pages talking about uh, welcoming you to the developer program and blah blah blah. Don't really care. So just go ahead and click next through all of these. And you will be greeted with a screen that has a code on it that looks something like this. Now this code is used to register your Xbox console to your developer account, so you do need to have a developer mode license, it costs $20, and we are going to go to the website listed here to get this all set up. Over on your computer, type in that web address that you just saw on your Xbox. So https colon slash slash aka dot ms slash activate xbox and when you press enter it will bring you to the microsoft partner page if you're already signed into an xbox live account or a microsoft account rather so i'm already logged in so it just brought me to this you might need to log in for this to show up from here go ahead and scroll down to the developer programs and there is a windows and xbox section here also rip mixer and uh yeah windows and xbox click get started and it'll bring you to this new page, get started with Windows apps. So we're gonna click sign up now and go ahead and fill out all of this registration and account info. So it's gonna ask you for your name, address and uh, payment options. So you are an individual. So you're gonna be paying $19 to get this activated. So go ahead, fill all this out, get it set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, skip past this part so you don't see all my personal info. After you finish your registration and payment, you will get a, register a registration confirmation and be brought to your Microsoft uh, developer dashboard here. From here, go ahead and type in that HTTPS colon slash slash aka dot MS slash activate Xbox web address again. This will bring you to your manage Xbox One consoles tab where you can add in your Xbox Series X. So over on the right is a plus button. Click on that, enter activation code, and type in the code that appears on your Xbox. If you took a long time during registration like I did, when you enter the code, it might give you an error that it is no longer valid, like this. And that's fine. Just go ahead and refresh the page and refresh the page on your Xbox. Now do it again, enter activation code, and type in your new code.
and your Xbox is now registered on your developer account. And you could go ahead and rename this if you want to. It doesn't have a name by default, so you could just add one if you feel so inclined. You don't have to. I just went ahead and did it anyway. And save when you're done. Ta-da! Your Xbox is all set up on your developer account and is ready to be switched into dev mode! So back over on the Xbox, you will see that the code page has changed over to this switch to developer mode page. So, switch and restart, and wait for it to reboot. After it finishes rebooting, you will be brought to the Xbox dev menu here, and there's quite an interesting look to this, but that's okay. If it asks you for advanced video features, go ahead and enable them, that way you just have uh, your maximum display resolution set by default. Next, over in the top right, you can see a thing for test accounts, so you can add your existing Xbox Live profile, or you can add a guest account so you can actually use RetroArch. I just went ahead and added my Xbox Live account, I didn't show that sign-in process in this video though. Next, we're going to head over to RetroArch.com and click on the Download tab, and instead of doing our normal nightly build like I typically do in my emulation tutorials, we are just going to go to the Xbox One section here because there are no nightly builds. But once you get to this section, click on Download, let it do its thing, and then click on the download for this Microsoft Visual C++ uh, runtime package as well. Once both of those are downloaded, we need to get them installed onto our Xbox Series X. So on the Xbox dev mode screen, you can see that there is a remote access IP address. And to get started using it, you need to go to the remote access settings. You will want to enable the Xbox device portal. And if you want to, you can enable authentication as well. I went ahead and did so just because I'm showing it off on the internet. Once you have that enabled, you can go ahead and open up a web browser and scroll over to it. I already had mine hotkeyed. But now from here, we're going to add RetroArch to My Games and Apps, so click this Add button. Choose the file, so we've got RetroArch right here. Click on Next. Any necessary dependencies. Now choose the other file that we just downloaded, and click Start and it will install RetroArch onto your Xbox Series X or Xbox One console, depending on what you're using. But that is the install process in a nutshell. Now that it's installed, it shows up under My Games and Apps, and right here we're going to press the uh, select button, or rather the button that has like the two windows that would be where select is. I don't quite remember what that button's called off the top of my head right now. I always just call it back or select because I hate the new naming conventions that came out with Xbox One, so whatever. Select button. View details. And we're going to change it from an app to a game. This way it allows it to have full GPU access, otherwise we are going to get really bad performance on pretty much everything. Now that that has been changed, we're going to restart the Xbox, otherwise the change will not take effect. So from here, just restart console. Restart now. And now that the console is restarted, we are ready to finally launch into RetroArch. So just go ahead and click on it here, or if you'd like to have a more traditional Xbox One-esque home screen, you can click Launch Home first, and then click on it.
And now when you first load it up, it um, doesn't look right. So we need to actually download a few things. So we're gonna go to the online updater and we're gonna select update assets. This will take a minute for it to extract. There's a lot of data in here that is needed for the program to look correctly. Once it finishes installing, you will get a temporary black screen as it updates everything. And, and now look, all of a sudden, like everything doesn't look so pixelated and weird. Look at that. Awesome. Before we back out of this screen, also update the core info files, the controller profiles, and the databases. If you'd like, you could also update the cheats, but this will take around 40 to 50 minutes to extract. So I really don't recommend it unless you're gonna use cheats. Like it is such a waste of time waiting on it. Now, after all those are updated, go ahead and back out to the main menu. And for those of you who use RetroArch a lot, I am sure you noticed that there is something wrong with this XMB menu. The icons along the top of the screen are currently missing, so you can't really tell where you are. And there's also another thing wrong. If you go into a submenu that requires a toggle switch, you can't see any of the toggle switches. This is caused by the UWP version of RetroArch to default to Direct3D11 as its backend. And for whatever reason, it has a bug right now and it's not letting any of this stuff show up. So on the main menu, press right on your D-pad. Press A on drivers and change the video driver here. Press A on it and change it from Direct3D11 to GL. Once you have that selected, press B. Press left on your D-pad. Go down to this configuration file. Save current config. Press B and quit RetroArch. Now we can reboot RetroArch. and the icons will appear as they should. Switching to the OpenGL driver is also really good because most of the cores default to OpenGL anyway, so you will get some issues if you try to load from the Direct3D core sometimes. It's supposed to auto-switch, but sometimes it doesn't. So this just really saves you a headache. The only core that really requires Direct3D 11 at the moment is Dolphin. So we will set a manual config for Dolphin later when we get to that setup video. But let's go ahead and set up a couple of other things before we close out this installation video. So going right to the settings tab, let's go down to video. And from here, go to scaling. And we can enable integer scaling for all of our emulated cores that we're going to set up. I really prefer to have integer scaling on. It makes it so that your emulation runs in a bordered window, but it just looks so much more sharp. I really, really like it. After that's set, you want to make sure that bilinear filtering is turned off. That way you have nice sharp pixels and presentation. I really don't care for bilinear filtering. If you like to have that more blurry look, you could turn it on. I mean, it does make it look a little more accurate for the 16-bit systems. But overall, I just don't prefer to have it myself. Next up, we're going to change one controller setting real quick. So go down to Input. Scroll down to Hotkeys. And we're gonna enable a menu toggle gamepad combo because unlike normal RetroArch on PC, when you click the Xbox Guide button, it brings up the Xbox Series X Guide. So unfortunately, that means it will not work to get us to the quick menu on the uh, UWP version of RetroArch here. So we need to set a new menu toggle. There are a number of different options available. I typically use start and select myself. I've never had a real conflict of interest in using that with games, so that's what I prefer. Go ahead and back out to the settings menu again. So next up are a couple of quality of life changes that we will need for core setup later. So press down on your D-pad and go to the user interface option here and press A. Now scroll down to this pause content when menu is active and disable it. And same with pause content when not active. Disable both of these options. 
The reason for this is when you open up the quick menu, it would pause the emulation. And that is a problem when you are playing cores that involve disc swapping. So like PS1, Sega Saturn, even Dreamcast, things like that. You would pause the emulation to change the disc. And then when you turn it back on, it doesn't register that the disc has been changed correctly. So if you disable these, do the disc swap, everything works as expected. From here, press left, go down to configuration file and save the current configuration. And that covers the installation and basic setup of the RetroArch front end. To see how to get games up and running, go ahead and select the core setup video for the system of your choice, and we will go into more detail there, but that does it for this particular video on how to install RetroArch on an Xbox Series X slash S or Xbox One. Do keep in mind if you try to use RetroArch on Xbox One, performance is going to be trash, so I really recommend doing it on an Xbox Series S or X. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And as always, if you happen to like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, well, darn. I guess you'll hit that thumbs down button. And also be sure to hit that sub button so you can see more tutorials just like this in the future. But that does it for today, so until next time, stay awesome, my wonderful internet people, and we will see you all back next video.